In the previous video, we covered casework. We covered some very interesting examples from AMT 10 and AMT 12. But today, we're going to discover a way to simplify many casework problems. Complementary counting. So complementary counting is just looking at what you don't want to find and subtracting it from the total number of cases. And sometimes, not always, but sometimes at least can indicate that complementary counting can be helpful. Okay, let's take a look at this problem over here. A positive integer is called ascending if in decimal representation there are at least two digits, so no one digit, no one digit numbers allowed, and each digit is less than any digit to the right. And you have to find how many ascending positive integers. Okay, so first of all, what is the maximum number of digits that are possible? Well, each digit must be less than the digit to its right. So every digit will be increasing our digit by at least one, if not more. So there's no way we can have more than nine digits. The reason is because let's say we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It has to increase every time, so we'll go by at least one, but eventually there's no digit bigger than nine. So at most, our number will be a nine digit number. Okay, so another thing, we don't necessarily have to have every single digit. For example, we could just select three, five, and nine, and that would make a perfectly valid number. Or one, seven, eight, nine. Or we could even have a large number like 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9. How can we count the number of such numbers? Well, it's kind of like a subset if you think about it. No matter what, the digits must always be ordered. And we must just somehow select some of these numbers for our number. So we can actually count this by just doing 2 to the 9 where we have two choices for each number. We put it inside, we put it in our ascending integer, or it's not part of our ascending integer. So for example, if 2, 3, and 5 are part of our ascending integer, then our number must be 2, 3, 5. Remember, because permutations of 2, 3, 5 are not allowed, because they have to be increasing. So that's nice, because only one permutation valid for a given set of numbers. So two to the nine ways, but is this it? Or are there any corner cases? Always be on the lookout for corner cases because they can make you ruin the whole problem and still be it. So let's reread the problem carefully. It says that there's at least two digits. Oh, that's tricky here. Now, because if there's two digits, if there's one digit, we are over counting the one digit numbers. For example, eight. In our subset, it is counted. 8 is counted, but it's not allowed in our problem because it has to be at least two digits. So we can use complementary counting and subtract off these cases. Okay, so how many one-digit numbers are there? Just 9, of course. And of course, there's 0, but that's not part of our subset here, so we don't worry about that. Now, is there anything else? The empty set. Always check this in all kinds of set-type problems. The empty set, which basically means no numbers are chosen, is part of our 2 to the 9. But it's not part of what our condition is asking. So we subtract an additional 1. And then th this was their answer, because anything else with 3 or more digits works. So 512 minus 10 equals 502. And that's how you solve this problem. Now, complementary counting is very powerful. Another thing is that complementary counting is oftentimes useful in addition to casework. The reason is that sometimes a casework problem might ask you to find 10 cases versus a complementary counting, you just find the two cases that don't work, which is much easier than finding 10 cases. We'll see an example of that in this problem. Freed of the Frog begins a sequences of hops on a three by three grid of square, as you can see here. Moving one square on each hop, choosing at random, up, down, left, or right. Does not hop diagonally, so that makes it a lot easier for us. And when the direction of a hop 
would take Frida off the grid, she just wraps around and jumps to the opposite edge. For example, Frida begins here and at the center square and makes two hops up. The first hop would take Frida here and the second hop would wrap around all the way here. And that's just one move. So it's kind of like a circular arrangement, except that we're still dealing with a three by three grid. So the first top, as you can see in the problem, it says first top would place her in the top row, second hop would cause to jump to the opposite edge, as I showed here, landing in the bottom row, middle square. And suppose Frida starts in the center square. So now it's the actual problem starts. And we're, we're saying that Frida starts in the center square and makes at most four hops at random and stops hopping if she lands on a corner square. What's the probability that you would a corner square on one of the four hops? So the key thing to note here is that she has to land on a square, corner square and at most four moves. That means Frida can land on a corner square in one, two, three or four moves. The problem is asking for all of them. And counting all of that would take a lot of casework. So instead, can we use complementary counting to simplify it a little bit? Yes, actually, because if Frida makes at most four hops, then to reach a corner square, then we can just count the number of ways that Frida does not reach the corner square in any of the four hops. And that'll just be the cases that don't work. So let's do that. So let's just find the number of ways that Frida can make four hops without reaching a corner square. So Frida must start at the center. Now Frida has four choices. Here, sorry, here, 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 or here. Four choices, right? So let's just say that there's four times whatever for the first, first hop. Now, the key thing to know here is our board is symmetric. The edges, for example, being right edge versus left edge or right edge, this edge here versus top edge, it doesn't really matter because the problem just asks us for to not reach a corner square, not it doesn't say anything like top right corner or top left corner. And all edges are adjacent to the center. And all edges are adjacent to two corners. So they're all symmetric. So we can just count the number of squares that let's say Frida moves up. We can just count the number of ways from here and multiply by four. So for the first hop, we have four choices. Now from here, assuming Frida moves up, how many choices do we have for the second hop? So now for the second hop, let's just, we will actually have to use cases in this case. So it's not just gonna be as simple as the first hop. Let's just see our two cases actually. Basically, from here, remember we're trying to not reach a corner square. So we can either move down back to the center square, or we can wrap around and move to this edge here. So for the second, second hop, Frida has one May to move to back to the center and one to an, an edge. And we don't care which edge, like I mentioned earlier. The so center, one way to go to the center and one for the edge, right? Okay, so now we have two cases essentially. Frida moves to, goes to, on the second hop to the center or Frida on the second hop goes to an, another edge, in which case would be wrapping around and going all the way here, right? So let's take the first case. Frida goes back to the center and from here we'll just count it out the whole thing. So Frida goes here, he, Frida goes back, and now Frida's back at the center. Frida again now has four choices, any of the four edges. So there's just four ways, and there's really no ways Frida can reach the corner from here. So just times four. And this would be the third move. So let's just write third here for third move. And this is the second, second hop. So on the third hop, Frida has four choices. And on that third hop, Frida will land will be on the center originally, and then from there, we'll land on one of these edges right here. And finally, from one of these edges, how many choices does Frida have not to reach a corner square? Again, we're doing complementary counting, counting the opposite. From here, Frida cannot go to any of these corners, so these are both 
illegal moves, the free duck can go down back to the center or wrap around. Two choices. Times two. Okay, so now this is just equal to eight on this part over here. So now what about this second case here? We're on the second move, Frida goes to an edge. On the second move, if Frida goes to an edge, maybe let's say this edge this time. Now, how many choices for the third move? Well, we can't go to the corners, right? Bad, illegal moves. Now, there's one way you can go back to the center, or we can wrap around and go here. Two, two choices. And I'll just write them separately because we'll actually turn out to have subcases. So one, we go to a center on the third move. And another case, edge. So now for the final move in this case, if we were already on another edge, how many choices do we have? Like if we were on the sets, let's say on the third move, it doesn't matter again, they're symmetric. We have two choices because no corners are allowed. Go back to the center or wrap around. So from here, we have two choices if we're at the edge. What if we're at the center? after the third move. Now, in this case, we have four choices for the final move. All four work. That's good, right? So that's times four. So in total, this is four, two. So in total, the sum is equal to six. So in total, the sum of both of these cases is 14, right? The sum of both of these cases will just be 14, eight plus six. And then we multiply that by four. Remember the first move, that symmetry, we don't want to forget that. So that's 56 ways that don't work. Okay, so if 56 ways don't work, how many ways do work? Well, first of all, how many choices are there for moves? Well, we have four choices for each move, up, down, left, right? So four choices for each move, then how many total combinations of four moves are possible? 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, or just 4 to the 4, right? Multiplying the top numbers, which is 256. So if 256 total ways, 56 don't work, 200 do work. And if 200 do work, and 256 total, the probability, remember, this is the number of ways to reach a corner square on any of the moves, because this was the number of ways that did not reach corner square, and this was a total. So the probability is just 200 over 256, which is 50 over 64, dividing by 4, which is 25 over 32. And that is how we solve this problem. One way at least. In a future video, there's another way to solve this problem. So we'll definitely want to check that out. Okay, so next we have the principle of inclusion and exclusion. So basically what this is, is that it's a counting technique that we can use subtractively in keep going to subtract elements, subtract sets, until we get an answer. And it simplifies case for problems a lot, just like complementary counting. But if you want to learn about this, you have to check out the next video over here.